Hello everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at a few problems involving Ohm's law and then we're going to move on to circuit analysis. To start us off, just want to remind everybody of what the unit is for resistance. This is the omega symbol in the Greek alphabet. It is used to represent the unit for resistance and it is called ohms, uh, named after the scientist that actually did a lot of work with analyzing circuits. So if you see the symbol in uh, circuit analysis, it means um, the, res the unit for resistance. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of questions on page 453, um, which had been assigned. Um, so question number one states, um, calculate the value of the resistance in each case. I'm actually going to take a look at 1B because I had said to be careful to convert to amps. So in 1B, they give you the voltage is 1.5 volts and they give you that the current is 3.0 times 10 to the 1 milliamps. Because we're working uh, in the MKS system, um, that all kind of filters down into circuits as well and the uh, standard unit for current is not milliamps it's just amps so we have to convert this into milliamps uh, so, sorry we have to convert it from milliamps to amps now uh, anytime you have milli as a prefix to a unit uh, that basically means that you're dividing by a thousand to go to the original unit now one way we can divide by a thousand when we have scientific notation is by actually just multiplying by 10 to the negative 3 because 10 to the negative 3 is 1 over 10 to the 3 which is 1 over a thousand so if you just multiply by 10 to the negative 3 you're actually dividing by a thousand and what's nice about this is because the tens both have the same base if we use some mathematical knowledge of how to uh, combine bases that are the same when they're multiplying uh, the trick is to add the exponents so we would have 3.0 times 10 to the negative 2 amps. And uh, didn't even need a calculator for that. Probably will need a calculator for the next part though. So the formula that combines all three of these variables together is V is equal to Ri. We can then isolate for the resistance, which is what we're looking for. And then we can just substitute the values in. So we've got 1.5 volts divided by 3.0 times 10 to the negative 2 amps. You don't technically need the variables at this point. Uh, sorry, the units, my mistake, at this point. You know that the final units are going to be ohms. And we just need to calculate that. So let me call up my calculator here. So we've got 1.5 divided by uh, 3. Now the button on this calculator for scientific notation is EXP. Uh, that just means times 10 to the power of and then I just put the unit, uh, sorry, the uh, exponent in there, so negative 2 equals and the answer is 50 ohms. So pretty uh, simple formula, V is equal to Ri Let's take a look and see if there's anything uh, in some of the other questions that we should take a look at. So if we look at number two, the only difference with number two is what they're giving us. So they tell us that the resistance is 2.4 ohms. They tell us that the current is 2.5 amps. And it says calculate the maximum rating in volts of a battery used to operate a toy electric motor with these values. So <clears throat> we're looking for a voltage. Here it's just a straight multiplication. V uh, is equal to R times I. So we have 2.4 times 2.5. The answer will be in volts this kind this time. And if I just multiply those two numbers together, 2.4 times 2.5, I get 6 volts as my answer. So um, make sure to be trying to follow uh, significant digit values here. Um, 
I'm not going to do it right now because uh, that's something that you should be able to do at this point. So uh, I'm not sure if we need to do any of the other questions. Um, I think I'm just going to move on to the lesson at this point. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. So let's take a look at some electric circuit stuff. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be analyzing circuits. And I, what I'd like to do is just show you what kind of circuit you're going to need to be able to uh, analyze eventually. And usually the most complicated type of circuit is going to be a mixed circuit where you have some resistors that are in parallel and some resistors that are in series. So this resistor up here, uh, what we call R1, is in series with these two parallel circuit, uh, parallel resistors here. And that can get a little bit complicated to analyze, okay? Um, but this is where we're going to need you to be eventually. To, in order to get here, there's a couple of skills that you need to know how to do. And that's, those skills are reducing a circuit down to smaller resistors, uh, or not smaller resistors, less resistors, that do the same job as the resistances that you're replacing, okay? So that's called finding equivalent resistances. If we take a look at this circuit, where you have two resistors in series, using Kirchhoff's law that says that the voltage uh, in both of these resistances has to add up to give the total voltage, we can find the total resistance of the circuit. Since V0 is equal to V1 plus V2, but V is equal to Ri, if you replace V0 by R0 times I0, um, V1 by uh, R1 times I1 plus V2, V2 would become R2 times I2. However, all of the I's are the same, and we did this in a lab, so I'm not going to go through all the math again, but you end up with R0 is equal to R1 plus R2. That means that I can take these two resistors that are in series and combine them together into one resistance, making the circuit much, much easier uh, to work with. So we could write that R0, the total resistance of the circuit, is equal to 10 plus 20, which would be 30 ohms. And this actually allows me to redraw the circuit with just one resistor in it which is doing the same job as those two separate resistors were doing, okay? So we've taken two resistances and we've come up with what we call an equivalent resistance that is doing the same job as the two of them that are there. When it comes to parallel circuits, in parallel circuits, it's the currents that add up to give the total current. The voltage is actually the same across all of the resistances. So because uh, I0 therefore is equal to I1 plus I2, and we can replace each I by V over R, but the Vs are all the same, the Vs will end up canceling out. Again, this was done in the lab previously to this, and we end up with one over R0 equals one over R1 plus one over R2. So I'll leave it up as an exercise for you. If you did not, uh, this was actually a challenge question in the lab that was done. Uh, if you did not do this, just replace I0 by V0 over R0. I1 by V1 over R1, I2 by V2 over R2. All the Vs are the same, so they all cancel out. You'll end up with this. Now this equation is a little bit more complicated for students to use because of the fractions. You've got to be a little bit careful with this. What we want to do is combine these two resistors similarly to what we did before, but end up with this, just the total resistance, so one resistor that's doing the same job as both. And there's actually a very interesting result to this. Um, so I'll, let, I'll talk about it when we see it. Now, the big problem here is you can't do anything with one over R0. We actually need R0 to be a numerator, not a denominator. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, the first way would be just to put the numbers in and work with the algebra with the numbers. So R1 is 10, R2 is 20. I'd put one over 10 plus one over 20. And then you'd have to remember what your rules are for adding fractions. So we need a common denominator. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 here. That's going to give us 20. We get 2 plus 1 at the top. 
both denominators on the bottom are 20, so I can just put them both over 20. And we end up with 1 over r0 is equal to 3 over 20. But we're not done. r0 is on the bottom of the fraction. I can't leave it there. I need to isolate it. The easiest way to do that is to understand that any fraction that is in a ratio scenario, so this is an equal sign between two fractions, you can just flip both sides upside down. I can do r0 over 1 is equal to 20 over 3. Now I know that r0 is going to be equal to the answer to 20 divided by 3, which I'll do on my calculator, which gives me 6.7 approximately. That means that I can replace the complicated parallel circuit above, it's not that complicated, with one resistor, an equivalent resistance that's doing the same job as both of those resistors of 6.7 ohms. Now this is the interesting part to this. Look at the original resistances. The original resistances were 10 and 20. 6.7 is less than the smallest resistor in that parallel circuit, which was 10. So what happens when you add resistances together in parallel is that the overall resistance of the circuit diminishes. So you got to be careful in a situation where you're doing this in the real world. So in your house, they have um, in electrical code a, a, a maximum amount of loads that you can have on a specific circuit. So what they're saying there is if you had uh, five plugins all on one circuit and they were all running, all of those plugins are in parallel and that's reducing the resistance of the entire circuit which is increasing the current. And if the current gets too high, that can cause overheating in the wires, which can lead to a fire. So that's why they have those kinds of things um, in electrical code to protect homeowners so that they understand, no, you can't put like 20 different items on the same circuit. You have to have a certain uh, amount. So we've now learned how to take a series circuit reduce it to one resistor, a parallel circuit, reduce it to one resistor. Why do we have to do that? Well, the reason is because of this kind of circuit here. Here we have a mixture of a series resistor. You can see that the current is coming directly from the battery through that resistor, but then it splits in two to these two that are parallel. So it's a series and parallel circuit. And what I'm asking you to do is to find every voltage and every current. It's a little difficult to do. I'll take you through it one step at a time. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to set up a table like this to organize the information. Basically, I've set up the three columns here to follow the equation V is equal to R times I. It can be I times R, it doesn't matter the order, okay? I've written the subscripts of all of the different resistances, including the battery, here, okay? So I'm going to fill in the table with the information that they gave us. So I know that the total voltage is 9 volts. That's my V0. I'm going to put that here. I know that resistance 1 is 6 ohms. I know that resistance 2 is 20, and resistance 3 is 30. As soon as you have any two quantities in a row filled in, you can calculate the third one with Ohm's law because we know that V is equal to R times I, right? So that's why I like this table. It not only shows me how many things I have to calculate, but it also will allow me to see as soon as I've got two filled in that I can just use V is equal to R I to calculate the third one. So let's take a look at this circuit. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than the previous circuits because if we tried to use Kirchhoff's law here, if I go around one of the paths of the circuit, so if I go around this one, okay, sure I know that there's 9 volts coming out of the battery, but I have no idea how much voltage is being taken by this 6 ohm resistor and I have no idea how much voltage is being taken by this 20 ohm resistor because I don't know either one of those, I can't find the other unknown. 
If I take the other path, I have the same problem. So I can't solve this just with Kirchhoff's law. What I need to do is I need to reduce the circuit down so that I can slowly figure out what are those values that are missing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this parallel part of the circuit here and we're going to reduce it down to an equivalent resistor. Okay. So we've got R2 and R3, 20 and 30. I've got those numbers right here if I need them. It's a parallel circuit. So I'm going to calculate my first equivalent resistance, but because it's a parallel circuit, I have to do 1 over R equivalent. And that's going to be equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. I'm going to take this time to actually show you another way that we can calculate the total resistance in a parallel circuit. It's a little bit more complicated, but if you understand your math with algebra without numbers, we should be able to get to the same result that we had before. And what it will be nice about this is it's actually going to give us an equation that we could use every time. You just have to remember that equation. So if I need to find a common denominator here, I'm hoping it makes sense to everybody that I'd have to multiply R2 by R3 in order to have a common denominator on this side, and I'd have to multiply R3 by R2 in order to have a common denominator on this side. And as soon as I multiply by R3 on the bottom here, I also have to do it up here. And as soon as I multiply by R2 here, I have to do it up here as well. So what we end up with is 1 over R equivalent is equal to R3 plus R2 Sorry, R2. Let me erase that and make it a little nicer, actually. And that's all divided by R2, R3, which are multiplying each other. Now I have to flip the fraction, but I can flip it because this is all one numerator. This is all one denominator. I can actually flip this fraction now. So R equivalent is going to be equal to R2 times R3 and I'm just going to change the order of the addition to R2 plus R3. And this will work every time. This formula will work, no, even if you had three resistors in parallel, you could do R2 times R3 times R4, all divided by R2 plus R3 plus R4. But you have to remember that formula, or at least remember the process to getting it. But once you have the formula, you can use it over and over again. So I'm just going to continue off to the side here. My R2 was 20. My R3 is 30. That's going to be divided by 20 plus 30. 20 times 30 is 600. Divided by 50. Um, and I'm having trouble doing that in my head for some reason, so let me just pull out my calculator here. And the answer is 12. So that's the equivalent resistance for that parallel part of the circuit. Now that means I can now redraw this circuit, changing that green highlighted area to one resistor, okay? And you'll notice that it is 12 ohms, which is less than the smallest amount, which was 20 in that parallel circuit. So I've got nine volts, six ohms, and now I have 12 ohms. So this is my new circuit, nine volts. six ohms, 12 ohms. Actually, let me make that green so that you can see that it's the same value as what we just calculated. Oops, wrong color again. And these would have been ohms here. Okay. So this is my equivalent rate uh, resistance, all right? It's replacing those two that were in parallel but I still can't figure out the answer because I still don't know how much this six ohms is taking. I still don't know how much this 12 ohm is taking. I need to reduce this even more, okay? And you'll see how that is going to help us out in a minute. So now I'm going to do another equivalent resistance and it's going to be combining those two resistors, but these two resistors are in series. So I'm going to call this R equivalent 2, because it's the second equivalent um, resistance that I'm calculating. But because they're in series, it's just R1 plus the first R equivalent. You're just adding them together. That's going to give us 12 plus 6, which is 18 ohms. 
And now I can redraw the circuit one more time, and I can redraw it with just one resistance. And we're going to say that this is 18 ohms. So how does this help us? Well, remember that this is the final equivalent resistance, which we can say is actually the total resistance. This is the total resistance of this circuit. If I go back up to my table, and I already forgot the number, <laughs> it's 18 ohms. If I go back up to my table, that means that I can say that this right now is 18 ohms, which I calculated from below. Well, if that's 18 ohms, remember how I said earlier that as soon as you know two values in the table, you can calculate the third one? Because V is equal to Ri, we know that I is equal to V over R. We just isolate for I. Well, my voltage is 9, my resistance is 18, 9 divided by 18 is 0 0.5. And I'm going to circle these values so that you know that they were calculated, okay? Now, because this is 0 0.5, what does that tell me? Well, if I go back down to this picture, I now know that the circuit has 0 0.5 amps circulating through it. And that means that this resistor has 0 0.5 amps circling through it. But this is my R equivalent too. So I'm going to move up one step and I'm going to say, okay, that means I have 0 0.5 amps going through resistance of 6 ohms and I have 0 0.5 amps going through my resistance of 12 ohms. Now the 6 ohm one is the most important because that's R1. If I go up to my table, I can now say that R1 also has 0 0.5 amps going through it. Again, I have two columns filled in, in that row. That means I can calculate the third one. Well, V is equal to R times I, 6 times 0.5 is 3 volts. So I know I have 3 volts in my resistance. So I'm going to go back down to my picture. And, sorry, I went a little bit too far down. So I know that I now have 3 volts in this resistor. Well, what does that help me find? Well, that helps me find how much voltage I have in this resistor, which is my R equivalent from the first parallel circuit. If I have 3 volts here, and I had 9 volts in total, we know that the voltages in series have to add up to give the total voltage. So 3 plus what equals 9? Or we can say that 9 minus 3 equals 6. That is the amount of volts that is going to be on the 12, volt, the 12 ohm resistor. So <clears throat> I'm going to go back up one more step. Actually, I'm going to go all the way up to this picture now. I now know that there are 6 volts on either side of these resistances. So R2 and R3, because they're in parallel, have the same amount of voltage. And we just calculated that that R equivalent has 6 volts. So I can put 6 volts here, I can put 6 volts here, and now you can see that I only have these two values left to calculate. I is equal to V over R. So this first one is going to be 6 divided by 20. The second one is going to be 6 divided by 30. So let me call up my calculator here. 6 divided by 20 is equal to 0.3. 6 divided by 30 is equal to 0.2. So I've got 0.3 amps, 0.2 amps. And I can clearly see that those two currents following Kirchhoff's law to junction are going to add up to give me the total current, which is 0.5. Once again, I'm just going to circle all of the values that I calculated so that you can see that those are calculated values. So it's really like solving a puzzle. Once you find one pu puzzle piece, it just allows you to add another puzzle piece to the final picture and then another, another puzzle piece to the final picture, and it works out really, really well. So I'm just going to recap what we did here. We had a series and parallel circuit. Kirchhoff's laws were not helping us solve this circuit. 
we had to use another way. And the way is to reduce the circuit down into equivalent resistances that are replacing complicated parts of the circuit into less complicated looking parts temporarily. So we took these two parallel resistors, we calculated the equivalent resistance. I showed you how to do it a slightly more algebraic way here, but you could always just put the numbers in and do it that way if you want. We found that equivalent resistance, so we replaced those two parallel ones by the 12 ohm resistor. Then we took those two series resistors, used the rule for adding series resistors, we just add them together, that gave us our 18 ohms for that. Once we got our 18 ohms, now the table is not absolutely necessary, right? You could just do the math right beside this table at this point and say, oh, okay, I have nine volts, I have 18 ohms, I'll just calculate the current. I just like the organization of the table, like I said. So I came up here, I, uh, I put the uh, resistance for the total, which is the zero value, that's our original um, voltage resistance and calculated the original current. Once I had that original current, that's the current going through both of these resistors. So that allowed me to say, okay, I've got 0.5 going through the six ohm resistor. That allowed me to calculate um, the uh, voltage, I guess, on that resistor. Did I have to, s I think I had to, s yeah. I had to circle that number because that was a calculated value. I think I forgot to do that. So I calculated that. That allowed me to figure out how much voltage was left over for the other two parallel resist, uh, resistors. And once I had that, it allowed me to calculate the two currents. Now this is only going to start to make more sense once you practiced it. Um, but I believe I have another example. Oh, I don't. So you really do need to start practicing that, okay? And um, in order to do that, there's some work that you can work on in the textbook to start um, practicing that idea. And I will definitely be around to help you. Just let me know either email or uh, let me know another way and I'll be able to help you with that.